の交差点でみんながもしスキップをしてもしあの街の真ん中 OK enough of that Today I have a little celebration going on because I have finally passed 100 subscribers which is surprising because I thought it would never happen I thought it would happen when I first started doing a few YouTube videos when I was sailing across the Atlantic because that's pretty cool isn't it? but no I think I reached about 60 or something then I have 800 plus friends on Facebook me so what have you been up to? you look a bit tan have you been on a holiday? I'm like yeah I've been living on a sailboat for nine months Oh, I didn't know! <laughs> But anyway, thank, thank you very much. Uh, and for the first time I've gotten a few requests. So what I thought I'd talk about today is um, what kind of equipment and tools I use almost every single day as a computational physicist. Now, being a computational physicist really means that you're a theoretical physicist, but you are more lean towards doing computations which are quite necessary. Now some theoretical physicists might devise a theory just for the fun of it, like string theory. You invent a few extra dimensions and have some symmetries and all that and um, well it's a, theory, it's a theory that's not even wrong because you cannot measure anything. What I and other computational physicists bear in mind all the time is to make a theory which you can use to make some sort of prediction, some observable that you can measure in a laboratory. So let's get started, shall we? First, hardware-wise, what kind of stuff do we need? And if there's one thing that has really revolutionized my work, it's of course the all-new Apple iPad Pro. I'm joking, of course. Uh, this is a toy. And there's nothing wrong with having a toy. The only thing I really use this for is for note taking. See, here are some equations, which is nice because what I usually did whenever I do a computation analytically and you know, on paper, I would just uh, pile them up in a huge stack and yeah, then uh, I wouldn't touch them again. And maybe a year later, I would throw them away. Um, Apple has been talking a lot about how the processor or the processing unit in, in this thing is, is very good, it's better than my most uh, laptops, but uh, if you do any kind of serious computational science or data science, you won't really benefit from that without going through a lot of work, for instance, in writing an app. And I found this one app uh, which allows you to program in Python on the iPad and that was kind of cool, it didn't really have the flexibility that I need. Mostly nice to have, not strictly necessary. My main computer, which probably may disappoint some, is the MacBook Pro. When when this this model in this in this size with you know just the uh, USB-C ports uh, first came out, the computer I used then had recently broken down. That was also a MacBook Pro, the previous one with, and that one was. Um, I was very satisfied with it. So when this model came out, was in 2016, yeah, I don't quite remember. I was a bit disappointed because it didn't really give you very good hardware for for the price. I embarked on a very thorough <laughs> a quest to find the correct laptop and I remember I stopped by the electronic store several times, bought a laptop and then handed it back within 30 days after I tried it for a while and there were a few I tried, it was the Dell XPS and also the Surface laptop and of course the, the, the Lenovo X1 Carbon. I wanted a Unix like operating system. Linux is that, but I didn't I, I realized that I didn't really want to dual boot Windows or install Linux on one of the Windows computers I tried and using Windows when you do data science or computational science is a horrible experience. A topic for another video I guess. The main reason that I picked this Mac again was because of the Mac OS X operating system which is based on 
uh, Unix. And I am quite satisfied with it. The only thing I have trouble with, with is the, the butterfly keyboard. It's weird. Last semester I was a teaching assistant in a course, introductory course on computational physics and uh, I would usually need to you know, use the students' uh, computers or help them with the problem. And many of those students, they have the um, quite old now, the MacBook Air with the old type of uh, MacBook uh, keyboard. And every time I <laughs> go back to that one, I was like, oh, this is, this is amazing. Why didn't you just keep this? But all in all, very satisfied. I think you are wondering, is this enough? to do computational physics. When you try to compute something, when you have a project going on and you say we want to do this and then you start building your application or algorithm or whatever you may call it, your module on a computer like that, that, that is fine when you're doing the initial thing. The only thing that you really need that extra power for is what to do the last step kind of. When you want to look at large systems, for instance, I am doing many body quantum theory and then you have to solve these integrals that are difficult to handle and for every particle you have in your system it is interacting with every other particle a system might be an atom for instance around a helium uh, atom you have two electrons but imagine when you go to the next uh, beryllium is also an atom that i've studied then you have four electrons right and uh, then you have so much more interaction you don't have you know twice as much you have for each additional particle it's interacting with the rest so it's n to the n factorial or something yeah whatever it quickly becomes uh, quite uh, difficult to manage and i'd really like to show you a few of the tools that i have available as a student at the university of oslo first let me start up this computer Okay, here we are. This is... Um, I usually try to keep my, my background clean. Uh, I have the dock to the side, but I very seldom use it. I usually just search whatever, for whatever I need, like a terminal, like that. Let me uh, log into... Okay, here we go. So this is uh, one of the experimental uh, machines we have at the university, and as you can see, it has one, two, three, four, GeForce RTX 2080 Ti, or well, four of the best gaming GPUs you can have, which I, I think is kind of cool. There are three of these kinds of machines with, with, with four of the, um, the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti. Together, they actually have the same kind of computing power as big CPU cluster that we uh, have at the university. The problem with this machine though is um, a, a gaming GPU uh, compared to a professional GPU uh, is that they don't have high enough precision for me for instance. If I would uh, perform a computation on this machine then I would uh, my computation would never uh, converge to a stable uh, value which is uh, a problem. Okay so this is the main computing cluster that we have at the University of Oslo. It is somewhat old now, there's a newer one in Trondheim. And as you can see, this is uh, a computing cluster with 650 computers and over 10,000 cores. I think it's uh, from around 2011 or something. So this is the kind of tool that you would use and it's usually more than sufficient. <laughs> it's called Abel after the Norwegian uh, mathematician. And uh, if that's not good enough, I know my, my supervisor, he has done um, a computation on a computer in Oak Ridge, in Tennessee, in uh, the, in the United States of America, uh, and uh, I think that is, if not the best or the biggest computing cluster, it is probably in the top twenty or so. So it's that's not fast enough for you. Then I don't know what is. Okay. What kind of software or programming languages that I use? As a physicist, you really want some sort of scripting language. Python is the go-to language uh, in that vein. It used to be MATLAB. MATLAB you need to pay for. Uh, Python is open source and, and free. One of the first courses you have in the physics uh, undergraduate degree in Norway is an uh, introductory course in scientific programming in uh, Python. Python can somewhat at times be a bit slow, so you usually want the compiled language. 
I'm uh, quite sufficient in C++. That being said, it seems that some of the more heavy compiled languages like C++ are not as necessary as they used to be because there are so many good modules, for instance for Python. There's Numba that uh, provides just-in-time comp compilation and you also have uh, Dask which provides very easy uh, parallelization if you need to run it on a cluster on or on or several cores. And another quite new language which is which is very good, I haven't used it that much, is Julia. It's very fast. A colleague or a friend of mine, he um, for a certain computation managed to solve that sort of problem faster with Julia than with C, which is usually seen as the fat one of the fastest ones. There are also some physicists that use uh, Fortran. Those are the traditional ones. My main problem programming language is uh, Python, and most of the quantum physics that I do is um, representable by matrices. So all I do is matrix uh, uh, multiplications, really, and has very good um, linear al algebra library. So it really has become, you know, the number one language in all of data science and computational science. And uh, it's great. Check out my uh, my video from AnacondaCon. Anaconda is the like the main distribution of Python, which also provide the Conda package manager. People have asked me if I use an IDE, that is an integrated development environment, and I don't. Uh, if you develop large software packages, there is a big new need for it. Even though I don't use an IDE, I, I use a, a, an editor, a very simple text ed editor. I, right now I'm using Visual Studio Code. Previously I've used Atom and uh, Sublime, they are all great. So yeah, this is this is just a, a text editor, and it's uh, quite good. I also yeah, what else is there to say? It's just text, and whenever I want to compile something, I do it in my uh, my terminal. Usually, whenever I use a text editor, I have an emulator for the kind of commands, and it's I, I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's it's made in such a way that you always you know keep your hands at the same place on your keyboard, and you don't really you know, move them that much in order to program faster or whatever. It's, it's kind of cool. There's even a game. I'll provide a link for it for you to learn the, the actual controls. It's fun. That was really everything I wanted to talk about today. Thank you for your attention. If you have a request for a video, I will try to make it. Sorry that it's been so long since my last one. I kind of got into a uh, state of crippleness after I broke my heel. It was very painful. Thank you for your sympathy. I'm better now. Thanks for asking. Please do uh, come with requests if there's anything you want me to talk about. I really want to um, make a better introduction to computing clusters. I have an idea of making a sort of mini-series on the history of quantum mechanics, which I find fascinating. Why quantum mechanics is necessary. It has some weird um, predictions and uh, results. Goodbye. Thank you for watching. Uh, what's your favorite function? Can't answer.